So we're going to move on. I know there's a little bit more we could have said about surfaces of revolution, but um, quarter surfaces are more fun. So we're going to jump straight to those. Uh, these will come up fairly often as sort of objects that we study once we're moving on to multivariable calculus. Um, they're nice objects to work with. As surfaces in three dimensions go, they are among the simpler options that we have. Um, they will look complicated at first, but they're relatively simple. Um, and this is basically like the 3D version of conic sections. So if you're a little rough, rusty on your conic sections, you might want to go back and review those now. Um, go over you know, your ellipses, your parabolas, your hyperbolas. Um, and the idea is basically that these quadric surfaces are, are going to be built out of conic sections. And we'll, in a certain way, we'll see how, how that works. Right? So, so you want to go back and um, have a look you know, at your, you know, your, your ellipse and remember the you know, sort of ellipse looks something like this, right? A uh, typical kind of standard form equation would look something like, like so, right? Your hyperbola, which might look, say, like this. I know that's a terrible drawing of a hyperbola, but we're we want, we want to get to the, to the punchline, so let's just kind of put that down, right? And then we have the, the parabola, um, which maybe there's a typical parabola, right? Something like, uh, let's say, uh, x is equal to some, let's say, a times y squared, something like that, right? Um, so we have our, our conic sections. Now, a quadric surface is, is going to be something that the sort of equations that we're going to look at are going to be things like, um, you know, ax squared plus, oh, well, maybe there's a linear term in x, right, like we see in a parabola, right? Um, but then we might also have, say, y terms, we might have z terms, and there might be a constant on the other side, like we see in a, an ellipse or a hyperbola. Uh, now, if we wanted to do sort of fully general quadric surfaces, we would also have to allow for quadratic terms that combine variables, so x times y, y times z, x times z, these so-called cross terms, those can show up. Uh, that really complicates things. Uh, Focusing on quadric surfaces of this type lets us concentrate on ones that are sort of aligned with respect to the coordinate axes. If you have those cross terms like x, y, or y, z in there, um, what you end up with is actually just some rotated version of the quadric surfaces that we will look at. And um, there are ways to deal with those, but they typically involve a bit of linear algebra, right? And not everyone doing calculus has the necessary linear algebra to kind of go through those procedures. Um, they're kind of cool. They involve like eigenvalues and diagonalization and things like that. Um, so they're, they're fun to play with, but uh, not what we want to focus on here. Right? Um, and so quadric surfaces, they also come in, in sort of various types. All right? So there are, there's the ellipsoid. All right? um, there are Uh, paraboloids, actually there's, there's more than one type of, of paraboloid. There are elliptic paraboloids and there are hyperbolic paraboloids. Okay. Um, and there are also hyperboloids. And there's more than one type of hyperboloid as well. Uh, there are so-called hyperboloids of, of one sheet and hyperboloids of, of two sheets. Right? Um, and all of these, you will see that they are very much sort of 3D analogs of the, of the 
conic sections, and you'll see these conic sections showing up. Um, and, and so, for example, an ellipsoid, well, an ellipsoid is going to look something like this. Well, it's an ellipse, but we want to make it 3D. Uh, oh, let's maybe add something like this, right? So an ellipsoid is, is like a football shape, right? And typical equation for an ellipsoid is, is, it's like the equation of an ellipse, but we add one more variable. So it's going to look like, say, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. Okay. Um, and then paraboloids, well, there are many, there are a lot of different versions of these paraboloids depending on what uh, axis they're opening along. Um, but a typical paraboloid is, is sort of like, well, an elliptic paraboloid is like a bowl shape. So there's like something like that, right? Um, so when you cut it in one direction, you get an ellipse, and if you cut it in other directions, you get parabolas. Okay. Um, the hyperbolic paraboloid is, is the one that nobody can draw. I'm really bad at it. Um, the hyperbolic paraboloid is a sort of saddle surface. It looks something like this. Right? Yeah, that's not so bad. Okay. And so some of the cross sections are, are parabolas, and you can see what's interesting about the hyperbolic paraboloid is that um, looking at it one way, you see parabolas opening upward. Uh, looking at it another way, you see parabolas that open uh, downward. And if you look at it um, in, in say, yet one more way, you're going to see hyperbolic shapes showing up, right? The hyperbolic shapes are actually kind of here, like there, and there. Um, that's the, the, hyper, the hyperbola part, right? Um, so sort of looked at from above, kind of hyperbola sort of thing going on. Looking at it kind of coming this way, you see parabolas opening downward. Looking at it head on, you see parabolas opening upward. Kind of cool. Um, hyperboloids, right, you kind of take this picture here, and you think about like the two ways that you could revolve it. Um, now, uh, we could be a little bit more complicated than just uh, sort of surfaces of revolution, but you know, if, if I kind of spin it around this way, uh, well then what I get is something that looks like one of these, uh, you know, like nuclear cooling towers, right? Sort of like this, like so. That's a hyperboloid of one sheet. Um, but if I spin it around this way, I'm going to get something that looks like this. Um, so I spin it around this way, and now I get this hyperboloid of, of two sheets. Something like that. So you kind of have one bowl going that way and another one going that way. Right? Um, and in the typical equations for, for something like this, um, for that elliptic paraboloid, well, you, you essentially have something like this, except instead of having a, a 1 here, you're just going to put a z. And you get something that looks like that. Um, same thing here. Yeah, put a z. You'll get something that looks like that. Right? Um, and then when you get to the hyperboloids, well, um, you start with, you know, like the ellipsoid equation, and you change some of the signs, just like we do here, right, with the ellipse and the hyperbola. Uh, right? Plus goes to minus, and that gives you a hyperbola. Um, with the hyperboloid, um, if you change one of the pluses to a minus, you'll get a hyperboloid of one sheet. If you change two of the pluses to minuses, uh, you'll get a hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, rough, and it's a good rule of thumb. Uh, that's one way to think about it, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll work through some examples, and in particular, we want to focus on how do you actually, if somebody gives you an equation, you know, one, how do you recognize what kind of surface is it going to be, and how do you draw it? Because we do want to be able to sometimes produce rough sketches of these things. It will come in handy um, later on when you're doing multivariable calculus. And, and the idea is that you, you focus on these cross sections. These are called traces. So you think about what you get if you take one of these surfaces and you cut it with a plane, right? Think about cutting it with planes that are parallel to the xy plane. Oh, here you get circles, right? Uh, or maybe ellipses, right? Cutting it uh, with a plane going this way, you see a 
hyperbola, right? Um, so depending on which way you cut these things, you see different curves, and that helps you reconstruct the surface.